Hey everybody! Oh, you're you're seeing the top of my head. My webcam for some reason is not pointed the right direction. There we go. Uh, well, good morning and welcome to the Base Trade TV broadcast impromptu Sunday morning show matches. Plural. That's right. You just got your mind blown. Uh, um, M Night Shyamalan twists there. Was it though? I mean, no one was dead. No one was the uh, the creatures all along. Uh, well, it wasn't two, set in modern day time. Two players will die today. It's I mean, but they're not but dead true. all along. <laughs> it's like surprise. Well, Hurricane no, you think about it. Lost. Well, that's the thing. You think about it, right? Like that could actually be the case. We don't know the outcome, but they could just already be dead, as far as we know. Or maybe there's I mean, a replays. Kind of a... See, that would be a Shyamalan twist. All right, fair enough. No, no, no silly shenanigans, guys. We've got some matches coming at you this morning. Um, I don't know if I want the light on or off. I can't tell. It was a little bit whatever. Um, but Zongrib kind of cooked all this together. So I don't know if you want to go into this and explain what's going on or not. I mean, sure. Um, so just cooking up something to do since uh, I've, I've not been casting and I want to cast. So, uh, But it's four players. Scarlet, Neeb, Jackshay, and Hurricane. Um and it just, you know, something to do. But it also is kind of an almost celebration, I suppose, of the fact that Neeb's back in the Bay Street TV house. So the code for tonight's Macherino, or today's, because it's morning most elsewhere, uh, today's Macherino is going to be house. Um, and you can definitely go to Macherino and support it. Hopefully that uh, man is ready to go on the chat channel. Yeah, I'm on the ball. There you go. Cool, cool. Um, best of threes, so nice and quick and short and... Hopefully we'll get uh, started soon. It should be Scarlet versus Jakshi. Uh, somebody... Oh, shit. Scarlet versus Hurricane first. Somebody in the apartment complex is getting fucking lit right now. Why is that? Oh, because it smells like I'm basically smoking marijuana in my room when I'm definitely not. Oh, my building oh has... I thought you meant... I was so confused. I thought you meant someone was getting angry. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> my apartment has very strict like anti-smoking laws and there's things mm -hmm. where like if you get caught smoking you'll have to pay like a three hundred dollar fine or something right by the way you guys can't see my camera on purpose i'm getting changed real quick um however because this building's full of like fucking rich asian kids with like millionaire parents they just smoke all the time and just pay the fee which infuriates me because i'm like i wish i had that much money that i could just be like ah oh, fuck it three hundred dollars to smoke a cigarette no big deal <laughs> Yeah, right? I Well, I also wish that that was... I mean, that's... I mean, like, real talk, right? Like, that's what, like, billionaires do in the real world to, like, get out of jail and shit like that or whatever. Or just, uh, they'd rather pay the fine of doing something uh, that you shouldn't be doing because it, like, actually makes more money than the fine cost type of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just wish, like, there was, you know, also a strike system, basically, right? So, like, yeah, you could pay your way until, like, the 10th time, and then you're actually just kicked out, but... I guess they'd rather have the rich people living there. It's. I believe the TV terminology is "fuck you money," and that's what I wish I had. Yeah. Anyways, I just changed into. I I don't have a lot of. It's laundry day for me. I don't have a lot of clean clothes. I just swapped into my Corsair T-shirt they sent me that I haven't worn in yet at all. And it's a nice looking shirt, but yo, this is allegedly two times XL. And I wear, like, regular XL shirts, guys, and this is kind of tight on me. I don't know how to feel. It's making me feel really fucking fat. Like, I'm a fat guy, but this is making me feel really fucking fat. <laughs> Maybe they sent you a kid's 2XL, which is, oh, like, Oh, a children's a 2XL. <laughs> Such a common, common thing. I know, Actually, right? Like, it's kind of depressing. The Corsair shirt is whatever for, like, it's a black shirt with the Corsair logo, right? That's cool enough. Whatever. The sleeve design on this is nice. I like this, whatever this is. It's only on one side, but it looks really cool. Maybe I received one, but obviously back at home home. So I don't know. I have to wait to see it on camera. <laughs> Do you like like that shirt back at home home? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. I might have. I'm mean, actually, well, I think my uh, my Red Bull probably also came. And I'm just going to have so many boxes when I come home. I'm just going to have like tons of boxes. I also was like, Maybe I'm like, like deciding on what should. That's a good point. That I paid for, for the most part, but that's fine. Yeah, that's kind of how Christmas fine. works, though, when you think about it, though, right? You're not paying for your own gifts. You're paying for gifts for someone else to give you a gift, like... That's true. I mean, at a certain age, that's true. 
Yeah. Yeah. But I, uh, speaking of gifts, I suppose, while I wait for Scarlet to get on, Koreans on time, foreigners lazy. Hashtag. Um, I'm going to show off the stuff that I bought today. Cool. <laughs> because it's so cute. Look at this. I went to the cacao shop. I mean, there's like tons of them. So I went to one of them and I got a body pillow. It's so comfy. Is that... What's the... Cow. I was, just, I was trying to figure out what face it was making, but it's just like, I guess, a very neutral expression. Yeah, like, they have different types of pillows, but the body pillows are mostly just uh, them facing forward. What is this? This guy's name is Ryan, I think. And they have, like, they have, like stories, but I uh, I didn't read his. I just know that I, it's cute. I like the bunny the best, but they didn't have the bunny, so. That's fine. I'll take the bear, whatever this is. It's so comfy. It's actually so soft. And it just... I need I need a better pillow to be honest. I don't mind Korean beds. Korean beds are like notoriously like just like hard, right? I don't mind that. It's good for your back or something. But their pillows need some work, all right? Just like German pillows <laughs> need some work. So I need I needed this. This is this is the uh, reason I thought it'd be worth the investment. And then I also got this. Apparently I like this guy a lot, right? I got myself a neck pillow as well because I didn't bring one to Korea and that was foolish. <laughs> traveling so much. <laughs> so it's the same thing. It's the same guy. Oh, hey, Scarlet's on, the by the guy. way. Okay, good. And this also has a hoodie on it, which I think is extra cool. But yes, now we will. We shall go. Vito A, B, A, B. Easy peasy lemon squeezy best of threesies. Also, I might be getting sick. Oh, that's not good, especially considering some of the important stuff we have coming up. I know. My mom was sick, um, but she, like, got over it really quickly, so I'm hoping that's going to be the same thing. Like, just I just, just kinda, chug like... water, man. Chug water and all that, you know? Yeah. It's, it's such a silly... Yeah, actually, just... for anyone tuning in right now, right, and you've you've been sick in your life or you struggle with being sick, whatever the case is, I'm telling you, my whole life, I grew up thinking the whole, like, drink lots of water and get some rest was just, like, a bullshit doctor thing to say. I'm telling you, if you are sick and you just chug water all day, drink chicken noodle soup, get liquids going through you, you will actually get better like two to three times faster. This is like not even an exaggeration. And I wish that they made that seem more real when I was little because I would get sick when I was little. I'd be like, I don't want to fucking drink water. Water is gross. Ugh. I, I kind of remember that, actually. I don't know. Well, actually, it might be like, you know, topical, right? Like American children eating like a, drinking nothing but soda, but... I think I just love lemonade. You know, I get like the sugar-free, calorieless, lem calorieless mm? uh, lemonade, and that's always what I would drink. So when I thought about water when I was young, I was like, like I never wanted to drink it, right? Um, but I actually had a friend who, whenever she said that she was sick in the, like, she had a terrible nurse at her school. Whenever she like came to the nurse's office, it was like, I have a stomach ache or I have a fever or something like that. The nurse would never want to send anyone home. And instead, she would take that advice to like be extreme. And she'd be like, chug this gallon of water, literally a gallon of water. And she would try and, of course, get sick because you don't just chug a gallon of water waiting in a nursing room. You chug that over the course of a couple of hours. And then they sent her back <laughs> to the classroom. I was like, I just love <laughs> imagining this like abuse. milk jug full of water. They're like, look, you can't leave this room until this is empty. <laughs> yeah, that's what they did. I was like, that that sounds like child abuse. I like, I hope I hope she got in trouble. That's terrible. Like, you're never supposed to do the uh, the gallon challenge of milk. Speaking of milk jugs, I suppose, because like that will make you throw up. You shouldn't. You shouldn't do it. I did that with water, and I remember sitting there with my stomach. <clears throat> Uh, you could feel how expanded it was because it was like just full of water. And I remember every step I took felt like you were going to just pop that balloon and like throw it all up. It was just the worst fucking feeling. So even if yeah. you can do it, you still shouldn't. Yeah, you, sh you shouldn't. Hey, what's up, Mega Dog? Uh, and good morning, everyone joining us in chat. Sorry, we are getting viewed to finish up for this first best of three. Erd Beardom, thank you for the 13 month resub and love and floofin for 27. It doesn't really feel like it's been this long. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing, friend. <laughs> well, time flies when you're having fun, right? Sure, sure. I mean, it's 
Not I feel like that 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 phrase and terminology really applies to like at most a day. Like that's where it caps out. <laughs> I don't think anyone's had like a week fly by unless they're like on a drug induced coma related incident or something like. I don't know, right? Like any like any fun event seems to get by too quickly. I don't know about that. Like I I, I would say like at an event like let's say it's BlizzCon last year, right? The evenings and the party nights and those things felt like they would go by, but the actual weekend itself didn't feel like the weekend went by any faster, at least to me. Mm. Ooh. Uh, I, I get it. Why does... I tweeted saying Scarlet vs. Hurricane into Neep vs. Jock. She live on Base Trade TV. And Twitter wants to translate it from Estonian? And then Bing says cannot translate this tweet. <laughs> Twitter, why the fuck are you using Bing in the first place? This is a whole nother problem, right, of itself. Right? Yeah, I uh, I don't know. But apparently you speak <gasps> in a language, you didn't even know it. Your friend Wardy is now watching. Wardy, my chicken dinner, brother from another mother. How you doing, buddy? I'm also still mad at you for lying about leaving and then tricking me into leaving and having someone else come in and take my place, and I'll never forgive you for it. And also, if you guys didn't see the clip, I hate Wardy. I always knew you hated Wardy. <clears throat> yeah. It was our best kept secret. Mm. Now when I was giant, like, fake rant, I was, like, uh, <laughs> fake getting mad at Wardy, so he was, like, helping escalate it, and I, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I was screaming, like, I swear to God, I'm gonna, like, schedule an event every time you schedule an event, and I'm gonna, like, get on the Twitch front fucking page, too! <laughs> And, like, I guess a couple of people in chat had just joined in on Nate's stream, so they actually legit didn't know what was going on. And they're like, does Riff get hate Wardy? <laughs> I'm like, yep! That fucking smarmy little Brit piece of fucking shit! God! Hey, so it's worth noting, too, uh, all silliness aside, we have some coupon codes available for today, because they're going to enjoy the show. I hope you'll consider typing an exclamation mark Macherino in chat and following the instructions from there. It's not really a big, big prize pool for today, and this is kind of like a last-minute thing, so there's going to be about $200 for prizing if we use up all the codes, but of course, if any of the fans out there are super fanatic and want to throw some of their own hard-earned cash towards the players, the nice thing is Macherino provides the opportunity to do so. <clears throat> yeah. Good, good stuff. Good, good. I kind of wish that this, like, I was, you, you know what the sickness, the pre-sickness is like, and you just kind of wish that you're already in the sickness, so you know this, the, the post-sickness is on the way. Yeah, I want it to be, like, that transition oh. already. This is such an annoying thing I've seen on Korea. Can you hit Control-Shift-C right now? Is that working for you? Control-Shift-C. Uh, the clan tags? Yeah. Yeah, that works for me. I cannot make Scarlet's disappear. This is so annoying, so you can't even really see her name on the overlay. Ah, good old blizzard bugs for no reason. For All no right. reason. Well. well, folks, we're getting into game. It's map number one. This is kind of an impromptu show match. It doesn't really have anything to do with anything. Um, I guess big shouts to Twitch for giving us the kind of free-flowing money to be able to do things like this on the off. This is not just because of sub money, but if you guys don't know, we are actually sponsored by Twitch, and they help us do a lot of cool StarCraft content. So seriously, big, big love to them. In the bottom right, we have the blue Protoss here in this best of three for this GSL style group. Ladies and gentlemen, Hurricane. In the top left is the pink Zerg. It's Scarlet. Press one in chat if you also hate Wardy. <laughs> Uh, so we actually got to see Scarlet play recently in a group style thing for the BTSL Season 5 offseason, and she looked pretty good. In fact, she looked killing stats good. Yeah. Um, even, if, you know, she took that game off of Gumiho as well. I mean, there's some complaints about Reapers, as there always is, but uh, no, she got out, and it was, it was actually a very good game. So I do think that she'll take second, basically. Like, um... It's a real, it, it, these players actually like you know we got Koreans but not necessarily the top top Koreans. There's actually a reason more so than just they were the ones that responded uh, that I invited them. We have to get into that after uh, this part. But it's um, 
It's that I think the foreigners are actually going to take first and second. Like, I think Scarlett gets second and Neem gets first. Christine might be, like, I don't know, jet lagged or still getting used to things. Like, I don't know. You but know, that's that's what I'm going with. I'm, like, almost with you on this. I'm a little bit... I'm, like, confident Neem probably takes first in the group, right? Um, maybe Scarlett's an upset. But I can't say I see both of them getting through because, well, Jokshi is certainly a player that has been all over the place recently. Dude, Hurricane is, like, okay, we haven't seen him for a week, a week and a half. But prior to that, this mm. dude was winning everything. Yeah, exactly. Like, the reason I, like, was really actually happy to see Hurricane is that um, not just that he had those, that, like, it was, like, uh, three tournaments in a row or something like that, that he was winning, like, not even in, like, top four, which is a surprise enough, but, like, actually winning. That was sick. Um, but it's also, like, it was somewhat off the back of PvP, so it's hoping to be a good game against Neve if he does, you know, face him. And then he also, I think, got out of his... Um, uh, like VSL group? Yeah, I was trying to remember which acronym to go for. Uh, yeah, this VSL group, I believe. So he's still doing pretty okay. SSL okay. just finished. So yeah, that's the one. Also, we need to note this is going to be a very risky stream tonight. Um, I have completely turned my camera into a weird direction. Not that it's on right now, anyways. It's too fucking warm to wear a shirt. So <laughs> <laughs> you guys are getting mouse hand tonight. Uh, if you haven't been paying attention to the recent events on Bay Street TV, it turns out our building's landlords have been lying to uh, all the people in the apartments, and like the AC is actually straight up broken. And it is like a good 25 Celsius in my room right now at 4 a.m. I'm not okay with this. I find that funny. I think I put my air conditioner at 27 Celsius. Mm -mm. So what is it? Wait, wait, what is room temperature in Celsius? You know, I don't know what room temperature is. I'm really comfortable with 21. Um. Mm. 2021 I think is like about where I'm I'm happy it's a little bit chilly for some but I'm happy around that territory I can deal with 22 23 but 24 and 25 and I know it's so specific as like these ones are your Celsius but when you're a fat guy it makes all the difference yeah plus it's Celsius not Fahrenheit so yeah I guess one degree in Fahrenheit is like big. nothing right like <laughs> yeah it, yeah like I've 73 and 74 degrees like that that's both the same basically thing. the same thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. anyways um so but uh, bring back the game. Hurricane, I do remember him playing very well against Perdos, I guess, specifically. So I'm wondering how he's going to do versus Zerg. I know he did beat well, Zergs and Terrans when he was beating people. I just I remember his PvP. For me, it's really not very much about like how he's going to do versus Scarlet, but how Scarlet's going to do versus him. Because I feel like we got to see really, really awesome and cool games versus Sats, and she's just generally a very talented player. But this is like the one matchup of all matchups that can sometimes be very, um, just say one-sided, no matter how good or bad you are? <laughs> well, uh, I thought you were gonna say adept. It's kind know, of what I was like hinting adjective. at with the statement. Yeah, um, and there are a lot of gateways on the way. So even though Hurricane took a third base, and he's still producing some probes, like this is a mass, not a gateways. Um, not even a robe over like a warp prism. Ah. Uh, this could be a huge surprise. She's going to have a Banely nest, but I don't think plus one will be quite done. And will she have the units? What I think is kind of cool about this hurricane, uh, actually had this void ray come out really quick. We didn't pay much heat to it because it didn't actually kill anything. But if Scarlet did have overlords to scout, she still probably wouldn't have seen all these gateways. That void ray would have removed them from play. So Chrono yeah. Boost on three of the gateways. He really wants to lay this in thick. We've even got pylons coming down to the middle of the map. I wouldn't even be surprised if he threw a gateway down with this just for faster warp ins. But even if it's slow warp ins, this is still a lot of units from Hurricane hitting at a timing where Scarlet's <laughs> on less than 30 army supply. Yeah, this is brutal. This is absolutely brutal. Scarlet had no idea. She was so close no, to getting like, the Hydra timing for this too. Like the Hydra's then just finished up. You will now if she makes them, it just won't be coming in fast enough. You know, force folks take them out, and then whatever adept weapons come through will also be fine against them. And this is just completely a surprise. I mean, no banelings were pre-made. Six are on the way. Plus one actually will finish. That's something, but well, is even it enough? Then, you know what? This isn't even about the adepts. It's all stalkers being warped in. Yeah, okay. Well, you're right about that. Interesting. But I think they are a little bit easier to micro behind, of course, the force fields that he's been placing down. So it's okay to the banelings that are now out of force fields. The force fields for me are kind of a whatever point because the guardian shield just kept those queens from doing like any damage in that fight. Mm. Hydras are now coming out, but they're going to be getting caught one at a time, kind of like what we see here. And this is uh, now zealots coming in from the backside. They don't have charge, but they still hit damn hard. And Hydras will not have fun dealing yeah. with these. Yeah, I think I think Scarlet just got got mad. Like this is actually a very because it, it didn't even come down with a Robo or a Twilight Council, you know. Like maybe you scout that, and in your mind you're thinking, okay, it could be a fake third base. 
But really, the Stargate opener, I mean, one, it denied scouting, or would have. And then two, I think just the follow-up was just a complete surprise, so... Uh, kind of cool. And totally, totally, totally works. <laughs> GG. GG. And then we find out whether we get banned on Twitch. We are good! <laughs> Although, the gain is so bad that you can only see this. Also, don't look at my bank card from my... God, guys, he's so... So nosy. What card? Um, it, I had taped my new bank card to my thing. Not not like a money card, like uh, bank manager's like card card. Like, hey, here, call me. Oh, a business card. That's the word. It was a... <laughs> I was like, is this like scratching your pin code in the DM? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> this doesn't sound like a good idea. Well. That first game uh, went well for Hurricane. It was definitely a bit of a surprise. We'll hop into map two pretty quick. All best of threes this morning, guys. And also, this is the Corsair Glaive for anyone interested in looking at the newest in Corsair Mouse technology. Wow. Wowzers. It's come with resonating in front of that. It's Actually, I have, so much faster. I have one complaint about the mouse I want to show off really quick. This is the sensitivity bar, so like you can you know increase the DPI and all that. And this button here looks like it should go up or down. It only goes up. So like if you accidentally press it, you got to press it like five more times to go back to where you were. Actually, I, I kind of forgot about this, but I think one of the only complaints I had about my mouse, because otherwise it was perfect. It was small enough, simple enough for me. Like I really like the guitar. I think I get, I wasn't used to spreading my fingers. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the way that <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> this is just me here to just get a lot warmer in here. Damn. Go on. <laughs> Damn it. But the point is, like, on my old um, Myco mouse or whatever, like, I, it, there was nothing in the middle, right? Like, I, I didn't have to worry about it. But in this mouse, that's how you change DPI. And I remember, like, the first, the first month, I kept on accidentally changing it. And yes, I had to think were... about that for the last, like, year. I don't, you complained <laughs> about that so much, and I just kept thinking, like, what are you, dumb? <laughs> what are you <laughs> no, shut up. It's you. <laughs> All right, folks, we're getting into game number two. It's the first best of three of the day. For those who don't know the format, there's going to be five best of threes in total. Someone was asking about the bit boss. We'll explain it in a moment. But first, the player introductions in the lower right. She's already down in the series. It's the pink Zerg Scarlet. In the top left, as the red Protoss. He's Hurricane. I know Hurricane and stats are probably not like BFFs who would like feel the need to avenge each other. But I like this fantasy idea in my mind where stats <laughs> is like, look, bro, she murdered me the other day. I need you to pay her back for me, please. <laughs> Maybe it's like a race thing, you know? I think well, no matter what, there's always that bit of like camaraderie. camaraderie? Maybe. I, I think, yeah. though, one of the things that is to note, Scarlet plays, uh, or at least recently with the matches we've been casting, this Hydro Lane Bane style that works really, really well. And that all-in out of Hurricane was kind of risky. And it's worth noting that if he hit mm. like maybe 30 seconds later, I think Scarlet could have handled it. So there's yeah. so much on the timing for that out of Hurricane. Well, exactly, you know, when you don't have to really wait for any of the research, then that, that is going to be such a sick timing. Um, I think Scarlet, like, you, you bring up the, the Hydra Lane Bane Lane thing, and she hasn't doing that. She went for also with, like, fast lurkers type of build. That was very interesting, but... <laughs> I feel like um, that lurker bus really was, like, a once-in-a-while game <laughs> at most. But even the game before that, when it was only Lane Bane, Lane Hydra, or, like, only Lane Hydra, I actually forget. Uh, the point is, like, it was awfully early without upgrades and off of a very low drone count. So she was, like, effectively kind of all inning in that game a uh, uh, couple days ago. Mm. Um, and I, I bring it up because if she had been the exact same thing, like, I wonder if she actually would have just completely trumped Hurricane's supposed timing, who's trying to catch someone right as plus one finishes, as their Bailey Ness finishes, like, as their Hydras pop out. Um... But, of course, we'll never know. that The chances of both of those builds crossing each other are quite low. Um, maybe, you know, we cast a lot of games. Maybe one day, but probably not in these. Not today. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I was going to say, before you do sub shout someone was asking about what Nexi Kuro is. This is the name of a very generous soul who has been cheering bits on the channel and, unfortunately, also been healing himself. He's proven to be the source of my allergies, and until we kill him, I'm going to have the struggle. So he's at about half health right now, which is nice. But I don't feel like he's going down anytime soon. Bits have been scarce the last few casts. But yeah, if you guys cheer bits in the channel, it will deal damage to the bit boss. If you kill the bit boss, you become the new bit boss. <sighs> like the Highlander, right? We should, uh, I got an idea for the best boss loot for today. What's that? <laughs> 
They have to give us a picture to draw, and you and, he, you and I have to each draw a version of that picture. Okay. <laughs> I could do that. There you go, guys. Some incentives. The poorly deal. incentivized, but incentives nonetheless. Good good deal. Alrighty then. Also, while we are waiting for things to kick off, big <clears> thank you to Muskogee for the. Uh, Muskogee76 for the two month resub. Welcome back. And then Slugger for 29. You get him, Slugger. He's loot. So, Scarlet, also to note, has very much intentionally, I believe, got a little bit more into scouting for this game. Overlords, Overlord Speed. I was kind of mm. waiting to see if that Evo Chamber was coming down for drops, but it is, I think, just because she's worried about getting caught off guard by a big all in again. Yeah. I mean, fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. That's Kratos. <laughs> I like that. Could we get that quote on a t-shirt? I thought you were going with like, the George Bush quote on this one. <laughs> Can you believe at one point we thought he was like the... I'm not sure if dumbest is the right word. Because like, technically he graduated from like Harvard. The or worst. <laughs> right. You thought he was the worst and then... People really did. Yeah, I, I remember. But, mm, well, it's been Trump's. Hey. Ha. Oh, God. So you um, gained a sense very... of humor in Korea. Very nice. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it picked up. Not this cold. Uh, the very, very light pressure. Like, this is even lighter than normal, right? Like, two oracles, sometimes accompanied by 12 adepts. And that's actually like an oh shit territory that can kill two queens and a handful of lings. But two oracles and four adepts? Like, ah, uh, yeah, these queens are the ones who should be handling it. Yeah, actually, killing one of the adepts is really nice. Not being forced to burn a ton of transfuses and still injecting. I mean, for Scarlet. There's still definitely some some scariness as far as timings here. She's continuing to drone a lot. Uh, overlords are no longer scouting. They've all been removed. So she won't know about these extra five gateways that are on the way. And I mean, this looks identical, except there's the addition of the Twilight Council on the Forge. So Hurricane, maybe he's not looking to hit with the attack as soon as humanly possible, but he's going to have all of this production ready to go very soon. Yeah. Uh, if she sees the Twilight and the Forge, she should be a little, you know actually be at ease almost um always gotta work watch out for the immortal push that can happen but it's like pretty rare nowadays i think on the on the current map pool that is because there's that immortal push that happened with a couple of centuries on like arena and the other short maps we've had but to do it anywhere else in a big open area is always a little risky so should be waiting for something a little bit stronger a little bit more and of course uh the buffer of charge lots as we see charge on the way yep Charge has just become such an integral part of the matchup. I really didn't think that the price reduction would change that to be the case, but man, everyone's more inclined to play Charge right now. And I'm wondering yeah. if that is entirely mm. due to the cost, or because Hydras are countered by them so well. Either way, Scarlet's doing a couple of very interesting things right now. So first off, Overseer got a big scout at the base. She saw everything that was coming, and everything that's going to come. No longer will she be so freely, willy-nilly droning. Secondly, she's gone for Swarm Hosts. Someone else did this recently. I'm trying to remember who off the top of my head. I remember, I think it was with Maynard we were talking about how, or maybe it was you. Um, most Koreans don't know how to deal with swarm hosts because most Koreans don't use swarm hosts. We saw a lot of swarm hosts play weeks ago. I maybe say, it was like with Maynard. Then. I think it was like the Alima League this past week that you missed or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, this actually is, is attacking even before charge is done. Like, not even like seconds before, but just like straight up before charge is done. And he's not even really warping in charge lots, so. He's gonna drop bailings. Just... Well, Locust thing. Oh. This is so cool. Oh, but the Locust gets stuck on the wrong side of the force fields. Wow, well, the, the, could use the force fields. Oh, the Bane uh, Ring's still pretty good, though. Die. But now she, like, their army, the swarm host, they're kind of useless. Yeah, the that's, locusts actually retreating here. It, to note, guys, that's 43 seconds Scarlet has to wait before she can even attack again. The locust be on the this wrong side a... of the force fields was a massive mistake. This is crazy, though. Like, I, I'm not going to say that Scarlet knew the exact timing when charge usually finishes. But it's like, it's not even charge. Okay, well, it is getting cleaned up. I mean, that's... I feel like it should have been, you know? Like, this is actually righteous that <laughs> Scarlet's cleaning it up because it didn't include the upgrades he was even getting. It Even if he was, it was way before the upgrades would have been done. I mean, that really looked like something that was supposed to be a poke, and then you, you run away and let the warp prism buy time, and it turned into an actual attack that didn't even clear up much creep, right? Like, he was just on creep knowingly and thought he had a chance to finish the game, but... 
He, he didn't. He didn't get the base, didn't get a lot of drones. I guess he technically stopped the gold base from, from getting uh, mining over here, but that's about it. And while it looked really scary, Hurricane has been kind of reset in his army. Yeah, I think one of the big kills for the... What? what? It's a fidget spinner. Uh, one of the big things that kind of killed him with that, he had a really good army going for him. The Bane Rain was surprising, but he still had army supply. It wasn't until the Queens picked off that warp prism that was trying to micromanage everything that he lost the whole reinforcement point. Because I think just like a little bit more, like one more warp in, honestly, would have been the tilting factor. Considering, again, Scarlet had to still wait like 40 seconds before the swarm host would have been able to fight again. So realistically, she only had an army that was like a handful of lings. Yeah. I'm still kind of like scratching my head at the, at the stalkers. You know, that kind of made sense for his last all in uh, attack, whatever you want to call it. But for this one, it just, it. I mean, obviously she knows he doesn't have blink, otherwise he would have actually used him to blink, so I don't... I don't know. Um, oh, well, it doesn't matter. The Warp Prism barely lives. These charge Charge-Ots don't do a heck of a whole lot. Swarm Host depowering a lot of things. Unfortunately, I think they were forced to run away. Hurricane was on top of trying to chase him down. Yeah, she's only lost about yeah. three so far. Okay. Yeah. Uh, swarm hosts, of course, are annoyingly fast to deal with. Now, here's where I get a little bit worried for Scarlet. I love the swarm host play. I really do. I think they're disgusting, but it's a unique thing that's still new to the matchup, and we're seeing more and more players use them. Blah, blah, blah. You've heard it before. She's actually staggering them, and that's what I wanted to bring point here, because when we saw the Koreans doing this, and again, I really wish my brain wasn't so asleep right now to remember who exactly it was. Uh, they were just throwing out all the, all the locusts, all the, everything in one big attack, and it would be crushed, and then he'd wait there for like 40 seconds. Gonna die. Like... The fact that Scarlet harassed with half of these while keeping the other half at home, ready for defense, uh, I, I liked a lot. We'll see if she decides to just barf them all up, though, because she kind of does have this insanely large force of swarm hosts. <laughs> but I think it would be yeah. best to still like stagger them out a little bit at a time. Kind of, like, there we go, like she's doing. Uh, well, funnily enough, oracles often get kills on swarm hosts. It feels like <laughs> when they're produced. Uh, so the C4 oracles <laughs> is not really a mistake. I mean, I think he knows that they can kill swarm hosts and that there's not going to be a lot of anti-air with this army not yet anyways you know the game goes on spire hydralis den whatever right but for now it is really just a swarm host um, i mean four more on the way now spine crawlers realizing that of course swarm it's, hosts aren't going to be great at dealing its harassment it's really funny too scarlet's not investing in range at all she's playing this as if it was still ling bing uh so, excuse me ling hydra um bailing oh. because you know you don't usually go for you still go for melee upgrades with that composition you know what's really scary too is that while staggering is absolutely a good move, oh, base over there? not quite. Uh, for Scarlet, these oracles, if they do snipe, you know the seven swarm hosts. Well, they can't snipe all seven, but you know, for instance, they snipe half of those that are actually waiting for the defensive <laughs> runaway retreat locusts. Like, like they can actually. Yeah, I mean the, the oracles are still very silly, but the point is, like, they could actually be the difference maker of of her game chasing or not. I want to agree with your point. But even with her bleeding them out, there's still 21 swarm hosts. Like, well, this is actually it, an insane amount of swarm hosts. It is. But it's like that one moment we saw that didn't actually pan out like I was thinking, but it's hypothesizing. But we saw a moment where, like, 75% of the swarm hosts didn't have their locusts. They'd been popped, and then she oh, had yeah, some yeah, stagger yeah, yeah. retreat. And the oracles were intentionally focus firing those ones down. But Hurricane didn't have much of an army to chase. So, like, it was, you know, null. But it was like, that, that actually is kind of cool. I think Hurricane's paying attention to that. And unfortunately, while the Oracle thing is, is cool and funny, and sometimes totally works out, these Corruptors are going to have to, you know. <laughs> I love mm. the Graviton beam. It is just such a, like, I'm helping moment. <laughs> it is. I kind of forgot that Hurricane 8 DTs. He's using them defensively. So uh, maybe some, some harassment's finally going to go in his favor because he hasn't been on this of the map in a long time. Well, I'm not sure if Scott is going to stagger these and throw them all out because there's an army actually here to fight. Yeah, she just barfs them all up. Um, I don't really like this because now she can't harass. If she had done like half and half, yeah. she could have still sent some to the main. It, so I think that was a bit of a panic moment. It also, like, most of them attack to single zealots. So <laughs> the army. I, I like that Hurricane's oh. handling this. He's just walking away from it. That's the best way to deal with it yeah. if you can. We, we did, you know, we were talking about the Swarm Host games of the past, and we couldn't remember which one you were talking about. But I do remember watching a group stage, and someone kept going Swarm Host, and then, like, Hero actually had a pretty good response all the time. It might have been against Yell. Yell just some walk the too. hell away. Yeah, he would just constantly trade and walk away and try and, and you know, out position. Oh, she's the almost swarm got host. him back. Two or three seconds to go. Bailey's on the south oh, side okay. looking for the zealots. 
Okay, well, that's a dead army right there. Yeah, Locust deal with the Archons, no problem. So <laughs> there we go for Scarlet. And easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There's still a lot of Archons, though. They gotta run away from this, the Locust while... I mean, the Locusts have like 10 seconds. They're not running away, so a lot of them just go down instantly. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's, okay, she's gonna struggle for a few seconds, but... I think that trade's worth the time she has to wait. Four Archons and a couple Zelts can't cause enough game ending damage. And Scarlet's Locusts are about three-fourths cooldown. Yeah. Well, like a DT or something killed her top right base, and she's back down to just form bases, and that gold is probably already starting to mine out. Uh, Hurricane's also finally gotten some decent upgrades at almost 2 1. He's got Blink on the way, realizing that positioning is his greatest strength. I mean, yeah, he's he's not in a good place here. He lost a lot of army continuing to commit to that, and she's just replacing the Swarm Host. But I was just saying, like, I wonder if he had, if she, or if Hurricane hadn't dedicated as much as he did. Um, oh, would have been okay. That speed and damage point on the Corruptor is really shining through in these instances. You would never in the days of old ever see this chase down oracles like this. Yeah. Uh, Hurricane not really transferred all of his probes yet to the uh, bottom left base, so... I mean, he's struggling. And well, this... he did... Uh, there was like 10 Archons that died and it never really made any headway in that natural. I think it's really smart that he didn't transfer, though. He's been under attack down there for so long. Uh, something's bleeding out drones, top right. Oh, it's a DT. Um, yeah. But yeah, that bottom left base was under attack so many times and for so long this game. It's like a tough choice to make. Like, you can't really run away when they're that close. I but... didn't realize how good Zealots are versus Locusts. Like, damn. Yeah. Any other army uh, in the game right oh. now, even Mech, <laughs> just dies to this. He really needs this base. Those are only plus two. They don't have Adrenal Glands. They don't have plus three, but well, you gotta be careful. So Scarlet's playing cost efficient with what she has, and that's free units. The base in the bottom left finally went down too. Trying to get this rebuilt. Problem is for Scarlet, her gold base is gone. Third pretty much yeah. mined out. So she's she's also kind of getting close to not having money, even though she has a lot of map control. Oh. Oh no. Yeah, I think she's got this game, but it just I, I go back to the the in forcing the issue in that natural. You know, like seriously, ten archons went down without any oh, headway. Yes. The only thing it did the only thing that it did was let the top right base not be protected. I and mean, she's still not protecting it. She's not bothering to. But for what he gained, that, that wasn't actually worth it. And he's Dude, lost a lot with it. You know what locusts are? I just realized that they're free auto turrets. Yes. I mean... Yes. They attack <laughs> so quick. They don't last very long. They do an insane amount of damage in the few seconds that they're down. They're like pre-patch auto turn. <laughs> Blizzard, please. What? DT blink. I mean, I realize that one DT has just been like working, but I don't think that's gonna help. No. Um, if anything, it'd be cool to see some maneuverability. Maybe chase down the swarm host because they are so fast. But both players in uh, oh tough God. situations. But Scarlet has obviously got control <laughs> of the situation. If that was the new way to deal with Swarm Host, Fear Dragon's mind would just explode. He'd actually just die happy. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Fear Dragon right now is like having heart palpitations in his sleep and he doesn't know why. <laughs> uh, I think this is the final battle. Yeah. Mm. GG. All right. Scarlet uh, ties it up 1-1 with really f <laughs> unconventional play. It, uh, I don't know. Swarm hosts are so scarcely seen. Mm. But hey, uh, thank you, by the way, to Kitty the Neko and several others who have been taking stabs at the bit, boss. A group effort. Appreciate it. Um, we also had Sorty Blair hit us up with a 20 month resub. And I hopefully think that's it. We're going to go to a quick commercial break before we get into game three, though, folks. So we'll be back in two minutes. The Match Arena prize was up to $180 thanks to you, folks. And there's still a couple of codes left, so of course, head on over to exclamation mark match Reno in the chat and follow the instructions. We'll see you soon. All right, folks, we're hopping into game number three. Thank you for watching those commercials. Things are tied up 1-1 one, one if you're just joining us. It's still the preliminary match of the day, and I, uh, I assumed people had used coupon codes to this point. I didn't realize that OFU had come in and threw in $50 to the prize pool today for these four players, so... Big thank you to him for upping the match enterprise pool pretty much half on his own. And uh, we also had uh, Tom KD throwing a couple of bucks as well. Thank you guys both so much. 
Also, I had missed a new sub. I'm so sorry about this before we went to break. Jonesy was a brand new sub to the channel. So thank you very much, Jonesy, for joining us here. Uh, and then Le Jode for 25 months. GG! Well, we get to game number three. And in the top left here on Abyssal Reef, we have the pink Zerg player. It's Scarlet. In the bottom right is the red Protoss. It's Hurricane. Hmm. Well. Oh, is the bot dead? Why is the bot I, not linking? Apparently. Wasn't okay. it working earlier? It so was. Go. I'm uh here, camera's on you for a sec. I'm just gonna go check yeah. real quick. Alright, well while he does that, Hurricane did go for an early probe scout to deny that uh easy peasy hatchery, which Scarlet probably predicted and as such already has a hatchery anyways. Um, this is a nice scouting. Scarlet is definitely a uh, type of person that can go for last game early pool. I was going to bring up a series where she did that, and then I realized that's that's a series where Jadong did it to her. But the point is, she also does it, so uh, it can be good to scout. Abyssal Reef also one of the older maps in the map pool, so I feel like the more figured out maps can sometimes actually be the more comfortable um, place to macro, but sometimes also where the most practice uh, comes in for the... the uh, um, pathing, there we go, pathing for the early pools and shenanigans. Um, but it's, it's done, none of that. Hurricane, I mean, he might have something up his sleeve, but we won't know for quite some time. The third base, all lanes are definitely, I think, I don't know if more popular is the right word, but that might be because watch Hero so much, and Hero just doesn't give a fuck. Uh, but I feel like they are the, the more valid against Zerg, since two base all lanes can be very, very obvious very quickly with the you know, Overlord scouting. Um, so I don't know. I mean, obviously the Stargate's going to try and avoid that, make sure that they don't scout it. But, it, you know, if she goes for Overlord speed again, which she did last game, then it's not much you can do, and it'd be easy to scout. So, uh, who knows? Yeah, sorry about that, guys. The bot froze straight up, so just restarted it. It should be up and running now. No one had done bets on the series anyway, so apparently we're not missing anything. Nice. Good deal. Uh, and the, the game didn't really miss much. So. I do wish... Oracle opener. First off, yeah. it's like etiquette. You never really want to message these players uh, between games in a series, right? Like, even if you're super good friends with them, you don't usually want to poke them because you don't want to in any way influence how they're feeling about the matchup, right? But I do wish we could ask Hurricane, like, in this world where I could speak Korean and he wouldn't mind, like, how he felt about that last game, specifically the Swarm Hosts. Because mm. I don't imagine this is something he's never seen before, but it is... I, I, I really stand by the statement that we haven't seen this really come to Korea much. And I think that while Stormhosts in general are a little bit more unconventional, I think Stormhosts in Korea are really unconventional. They're prob they're they're coming along, I think. You know, I brought up the hero game versus man, I want to say it was a foreigner, but it could have been pure. I don't actually remember. Uh, weeks ago, so it's still rare, um, but it is it's coming along. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, which I might be, uh, we just got pushed over 200. For the prize pool, thanks oh, to Alaska wow. Winter. Yeah, Alaska Winter's doing 21 <laughs> bucks. So again, OFU at 50, Alaska at 21, and Tom KD at 7. Thank you guys so much. Nice. So that means we still have a lot of codes left. Well, the prize so pool is going to be nice. Here's the question. Do we keep floating that prize pool up, make it bigger and bigger, nicer and nicer for the first and second place? Or do we just end up creating like a third place if we get more money for it? You know, I was like wondering about that, to be honest. I was like, eh, like that's actually another option. But well, you know what? Here, easy peasy. Oh, if you, if you're watching still, bro, uh, get in chat and let us know. You've basically single-handedly created enough prize money to create a third place prize for the players competing today. Would you rather we spread out the love amongst the top three out of four, or do you want just the top two to get all that dirty, dirty esports money? <clears throat> Maybe he'll say like the pen who wins <laughs> or who loses. Actually, <laughs> he's like, well. You know, I really like Scarlet, so if, if Scarlet wins, then yeah, let's just keep it top two. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? Seriously, it's, it's, we'll, we'll let him take the decision here. I think uh, money where your mouth is or something to that extent, and he threw all the money in, so we'll let him pick. Uh, Oracle going to melt away at some of the drones. Nothing too crazy, though. I, I like the control for this out of Hurricane, actually, not to go too deep. I mean, it's, I think it's so easy for a Brodos player to just kind of sacrifice this 
lose a bunch uh, drones early on, but for the whole course of the game, losing three <clears> here <throat> and there, like I really like that a lot more. Back when the day, I mean, pretty much Heart of the Swarm, but maybe even still throughout Heart of the Swarm, like not just the first year Heart of the Swarm. I do remember oracles being used quickly to, to target things down. It can still be an option, like for instance, if you're all inning versus a Terran off one base, then sometimes sacrificing the oracle is the better move. But I remember a lot in the early days, people, Protosses would sacrifice them on top of a Zerg player in a macro game. And it would be oh, like, what well, was eight, eight drones really worth an oracle and not rebuilding one? Because they also wouldn't rebuild it. Well, Zombie Grub, things are about to get a bit spicy here. Seven gateways and fast charge with I... fast plus one. If Scarlet makes any more drones, she's dead. So it's got to be Hydras, Lings, Banelings, like just pure army going forward. And even then, like, mmm, charge lots are so good against everything Scarlet has right now. Until Banelings can put into the equation, which she yeah. does have the nest for. Yes, but she didn't bother investing into them, so they would be slow. Maybe target down by a couple of more cons. Whoopsie. Oh, this timing out is uh, his timing's pretty perfect for Hurricane. He's also got a defensive setup with stasis traps and uh, a cannon, at least one, and a couple of pylons. So this is this is actually going to be as, as good as it's going to get for him. And there's stasis trap on the way. Uh, like, Scarlet's quite dedicated to this. You know, on this tech, but without surgical hooks, with no upgrades and only on 54 drones. Like that, this is more dedicated by far um, than even what like Hurricane is doing. Hurricane's getting a lot of gateways, but he's already like completely saturated on his bases. So this charge open could have been risky. She's being very aggressive, but it also might just be able to stop this dead in its tracks by killing the economy. Yeah, the overcharges are pretty nice, and the force fields keep everything from getting in here. So Hurricane holds so far, but he also gets a counterattack off at the same time. Uh, I like. I mean, this is still. A cannon, Ooh. another stasis trap. Not too great of one, but like more warp ins. Like I think Hurricane has just demolished this. Yeah, if there if there wasn't any counterattack damage going on and this was the same sort of fight, I'd say Hurricane yeah. was like at best like so so. But the fact that he's killing anything for Scarlet back at home, and I mean killing a lot too, is he's completely screwed a base mining. He's in both these other mineral lines. Mm. GG. Also, OFU says in chat, I would vote top three, but up to you. Uh, I'm also... Ooh. I'm also a big fan of top three. So let's make a top three. Then. We'll, make, um, we'll, we'll do the math later to figure out what the percentages are. But we'll, uh, we'll make a top three. So three out of the four <laughs> players in the group will get some cash today. And hell, if we get enough money raised, and that's a big if, uh, we can always increase that even further and make sure everybody gets some reward for putting on good games for us today. But OFU, thank you for the thousand bits. On top of this, he hits us with a bomb and not just a conventional bit icon. So, you are, wait for it, blowing us away, brother. Ugh. Anyways, uh, we're going to be moving on to the next series. It's going to be Neeb versus Jokshi. So, TVP coming up next. Also, big thank you to Kitty the Neko, who actually threw in $26.01. Says so Ace Fancy <laughs> Life. <laughs> and I think uh, that was bump up the prize pool a little bit further. Uh, Kitty's one of the people I think we're going to be running into at Atlanta, which should be some good times. But people are asking, what are you guys talking about with codes? So let me show you before we go to commercial break here real quick. Uh, if you go to the Matcherino page, again, exclamation mark Matcherino will take you here. Uh, let me log out. I'll show you the whole step-by-step -step process. Top right, you hit sign in. It signs you in with Twitch. You hit donate. Use the code house. And it'll add $1 to the prize pool. This won't come out of your PayPal. You're not entering any of your credit card information. This $1 comes from Matcherino. It's their sponsorship money. But their condition is, well, you do got to work for a little itty bitty bit. So guys, hit that donate button. Add $1 to the prize pool. It'll cost you nothing but a few seconds of your time and help everybody today get a little bit more money for their troubles. I mean, hell, if folks like OFU, Kitty the Neck, Alaska Winter, and Tom KD are willing to throw in real hard cash of their own, you guys got to be worth spending 15 seconds to type in that code. So again, code is house. Because we got two members of the Base Trade TV house today, Neeb and Scarlet, fighting against two Koreans. But Neeb appears to not be here. We'll look for him while we do some ads, and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.